This is Jamie Romero with Learn by the Byte. Welcome to Android Programming 2. Hi folks, this is Jamie Romero with Learn by the Byte. And in this video, I want to give you an overview of what you're going to be seeing in the Android Programming 2 course. Uh, this course is made up of well, several sections. Section 1, Course Introduction, that's what we're talking about right now. Section 2 is going to cover a topic called Layouts. Section 3 is on Fragments. Section 4 on Dialogues. And finally, Section 5 is covering Menus. This course, uh, the name of it, Android Programming 2, well, that, employs, uh, that implies there's an Android Programming 1. And, and yes, there is. Um, the previous course, Android Programming 1, is the true how to get going in Android, how to install Android, how to create a simple Hello World kind of app, and then building up further and further with various widgets and event handlers and inner classes, talking about, oh, many, many of the basics of how you can build apps in Android. So if you've already seen Android Programming 1 and you're moving on to 2, well, you're in the right place. <laughs> this is what this, uh, this course is all about. Uh, maybe you didn't take Android Programming 1, but you've done a little bit of reading on Android and you're already familiar with the basics. That's fine, too. Uh, this this uh, course is, is just kind of going to take you from that starting point that Android Programming 1 uh, got you to and, and just continue on. Uh, so what are we going to learn here? What are we, what are we going to um, uh, accomplish? Well, the objectives of this course, uh, by the time we're done with this course, you should be able to create full-featured graphical user interfaces with widgets, dialogues, menus, event handlers. You know, the last course, Android 1, got into widgets a little bit, got into event handlers a little bit, but we didn't go uh, too deep. Uh, we're going to go further than that. For example, we're going to have a whole section, section 2, on how you can control the organization of your screen with layouts. I say that, and I should probably scroll down my screen over here to, to highlight section 2, layouts. Uh, layouts are how we organize our screen, how we specify where the various different controls are located within our app. We're going to see that there's many different kinds of layouts. There's linear layouts and frame layouts, relative layouts, table layouts. So different ways that you can instruct Android as to how to place the various components on the screen. Okay, after we cover layouts, oh, and by the way, as you see this, Notice every one of these sections is going to have uh, labs, exercises. Uh, so we're going to challenge you to use your keyboard, your computer, to demonstrate your knowledge, demonstrate whether you've really captured and, and understood the information that we've shared in the lecture videos. And not only are we going to have the, the challenge to you to do the labs, but we're also going to do reviews of those exercises. So after every section, there's going to be usually several videos that review, that have me typing in the solution to the exercise and explaining as I go as to uh, what you maybe could have done as you worked through the, through the labs. Okay, after section two, we have section three on fragments. And it goes like this. By the end of the chapter, you should be able to design flexible user interfaces for multiple form factors using fragments. Well, what are fragments all about? We're talking about situations where you have an app that needs to run equally well on a phone as well as on a tablet. So a fragment can be used to take your user interface and break it into big chunks and, and then organize those appropriately on the screen. And so we'll talk about how you can build fragments either via XML or programmatically. Uh, we'll get into things like Oh, the life cycle of a fragment, and, and we have a little bit of bonus content, if you will, as well in that sh in that section. We'll talk about the list fragment, which is a very interesting way of working through uh, uh, working with fragments. Again, exercises, labs in that chapter. We have dialogues. Uh, by the end of the course, you should be able to pop up a message with either a toast or with a dialogue. Well, toast messages. These are simple little pop-ups that show up on the screen and they disappear after a few seconds. And if there's just some informational something that you want to share with the user, that's fine. You can definitely use them. Uh, we'll also see dialogues. These maybe require some sort of an interaction. Perhaps you have to dismiss them. You have to click on the dialogue to click OK or cancel or maybe hit a back button or something to, to have that dismissed. Uh, there's going to be several kinds of dialogues. Uh, the basic dialogues are the alert dialogues, but you also have 
what we call a progress dialog and there's also a uh, whoops, a date picker dialog as well. Again, exercises at the end of that section. And finally, section number five called menus. Well, by the end of the course, you should be able to add option, context, and pop-up menus to our applications. So there's various kinds of menus that you can have. The, the typical menu, the option menu, that would be something, uh, well, as of the newer versions of Android that would show up in the context bar across the the top of the screen, these are well, extra things you can do. Maybe it's like a settings menu or uh, perhaps it's additional configurations that you can do on your app. You can uh, expose those via menus. We also have the ability to do these things in a contextual way, either using what's uh, traditionally called a context menu or more recently they've had this concept called contextual action mode. As we'll see, this allows you to put in your own action bar, an action bar that's specific to the, the current context, currently what's going on, and have additional choices inside of that action bar. We'll also talk about things like pop-up menus and sub-menus and embedding checkboxes and radio buttons in them. So lots of great stuff in there as well. As you can see, again, exercises, labs that are there. And so Android Programming 2 picks up where Android Programming 1 left off. Right, we're going to go ahead and continue working through the user interface, describe, discovering new things like menus, like layouts, like fragments, and like dialogues. And so by the time you're done with Android Programming 2, you should be able to create full-featured graphical user interfaces, widgets, dialogues, menus, as well as event handlers. All right, so who is this course for? Who's the, the audience of the course? Well, really, it's anybody who's, who's got some programming experience, uh, some Java programming experience, and you want to just dig deeper into Android. You want to learn more about the Android platform, specifically here in this user interface area. We expect that you've had some Java knowledge and you've had some Android knowledge by the time you get to, to, to version 2 of this course. How you accomplish that? Well, maybe you already learned Java and Android on your own, or perhaps you took some of our other videos. Uh, if you haven't already noticed, uh, we do have courses out there. Uh, here's one, Introduction to Java, that's out there on, on Udemy that you can take. There's a course, uh, the Android Programming One course is out there as well. Any of these courses, if you can't find them uh, directly, all you have to do is go out to the Udemy website, go to udemy.com, and do a simple little search here. For example, if I search on Java Programming, uh, you'll see our... Our course is uh, somewhere on here. Whoop, I guess it's not on the first page right now. Go over to hit that next button. You'll see it's got a um, kind of like a, a green chalkboard look to it. Intro to Java Programming. Learn by the Byte is who this comes through. And the same thing with the, the world of Android. If I search on Android here in Udemy, uh, we've got a few courses out there. Our getting started is just the basically chapter one of our Android Programming one. Uh, but Android Programming 1 would probably be the most reasonable prerequisite to taking, well, obviously, Android Programming 2. All right. Um, as far as your development environment, we're going to have some setup videos. Uh, lecture 6 and Lecture 7 talk about how you can set up your computer to do the exercises and to uh, take what I'm doing and, and replicate it on your systems. Well. If you've already done Android Programming 1, you don't need to do the setup again. The setup for Android Programming 2 is the same as 1. We actually even have a little less that you need to do. And so number 5, Lecture 5, do you have to set up your computer? It's going to talk about that. If you've already done 1, you don't need to redo the setup. Um, what else to mention? We do have student files that you can download. And so these files are going to be uh, the solutions to the exercises. They're going to be... Uh, also, the demos that I do in the videos. And so we'll show you in Lecture 2 how to download them. And it looks like in Lecture 8 at this point, uh, that's the, the steps within Eclipse, how you can import those files into Eclipse itself. Okay, so that's, that's probably enough for right now as far as an overview of this course, Android Programming 2. Um, I look forward to maybe uh, interacting with you via some questions in the future and, and definitely... I guess um, I, I encourage you to look around and you'll probably see Android Programming 3 come up pretty soon as well. Uh, when, when Android 3 comes out, we'll talk more about things like services and broadcast receivers and intents. I think notifications as well. Okay, this is Jamie Romero with Learn by the Byte, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video.